Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If I look a little sleepy or sound a little off, it is because I have been fighting sickness for like two weeks now and it is it's on the other end, so I'm I'm over it, but it's just still it's still hanging on, it's lingering a bit. Um, but I can't wait to share with you who I have to share with you today, which is Cho Cho my chubby frog and I don't want to make this intro super long, but I do have quite a bit to say about her, where I got her from, and how I got her, things like that. But I want to play clips of me getting her, and her eating for the first few times, and like pictures and videos I took of her over me talking. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. But first I ask that you subscribe and hit the notification bell, because in a couple days after posting this video, I'll be posting a video featuring Gamakichi, who is my tomato frog. So I got them the same day. They came from different places in the country. Chocho -cho came from Kansas and Gamakichi came from New York, I think. So be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell so that when Gamakichi's video comes out, sorry, a crow just flew up from my window and scared me. So anyways, when Gamakichi's video comes out, you'll be able to see it as soon as it goes live. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a bit about Chocho -cho with clips of her on top. So Chocho -cho is a chubby frog and I decided to name her Chocho -cho after the uh, Baruto character. Baruto is the sequel series to Naruto, but it is uh, an anime that I watch with my fiance and my sister. We love it. And Chocho -cho is the daughter of Choji from Naruto. She is just this lovely, chubby, brown girl who is sassy and strong and she loves potato chips. She just loves food. And I relate to her on a very personal level. And I thought that Chocho -cho was just a perfect name for my chubby frog because like she embodies the characteristics of Chocho -cho the character. But I had been wanting a chubby frog for a little while. My first goal was to get my hands on a tomato frog and that actually happened really fast, but I'll tell you guys about Gamakichi's story in his video. But I went to Craigslist and there's this special function of Craigslist that you can use. Instead of just searching your local Craigslist, you can search all of Craigslist. So basically all you have to do is go to like search all Craigslist and you can just type that in Google. You can type that in the search bar at the top um, when you're like typing in a URL. I'm pretty sure it'll bring you to either depending on which one you use, but it's just this site that you can type anything you want into if you're looking for it on Craigslist. So I typed uh, chubby frog, I typed Asian painted bullfrog, the different names that chubby frogs go by, and I came across Chocho -cho being rehomed from Kansas, and I reached out to her former owner through email, and then once we thought it was like a good fit, we texted each other. So her former owner's name is Riley. Hi Riley, I hope you're watching this. It was really great because I got to ask a lot of questions about Chocho's -Cho current care with Riley, and I also got to ask, you know, different questions about how I might have her set up, like, oh, do you think she'll like this, or do you think she'll like this? I got to really talk to her and get to know a lot about Chocho -Cho before getting her. And the reason that it took two months between talking to Riley about Chocho -Cho and actually having Chocho -Cho shipped was because it was winter and you had to wait for nice temperatures in Indiana. So there was one day, one day was our goal. Okay, we just had to find one day where the temperatures overnight were higher than 40 and we found that day and that was on April 9th. So from February 7th, which is the day that I first texted Riley, all the way until um, April 9th, which is the day that she arrived. So she shipped on the 8th. She came in a box with no issue. I unboxed her and I didn't record that just simply because I was like nerve wracked because I was also unboxing Gamakichi that day. But both of their former owners cared for them a great deal, like an incredible, incredible amount. And so that really helped um, kind of like make sure that they had a safe passage and a caring home and plenty of health before they got here. When Chocho -Cho got here, she went into quarantine and her quarantine enclosure was just um, a little bit like longer than a 10 gallon and it had eco earth in it with a little ceramic water dish, um, a driftwood like ornament so she could hide and then also there was a fake plant in there. So it was just like the bare essentials to make sure that she had what she needed. Throughout this period of her being in quarantine, I learned that she's a very active frog, which I had anticipated because I got to talk to Riley a bunch before I got Chocho. -cho. And 
I was super excited to be able to get her out of quarantine because I knew she would really enjoy her enclosure, which I'll give you guys an enclosure tour of um, in a few minutes. And so quarantine lasted 21 days and I really honestly only quarantined her to be safe, but because Chocho came from like a home where she had already been a pet for a while, you know, she wasn't like coming from an expo. I actually do want to make a video where I talk about quarantine in depth because it differs based on the situation, based on the species. Quarantine is always something that's a really good idea to, to do. But, like, if you're getting a rescue, quarantine is going to be longer and it's going to be more strict. If you're getting an animal from an expo, quarantine should be longer and quarantine should be more strict. So I'm actually going to make a video about that sometime down the road. But anyways, let's move on. After her, the 21-day period, I moved her out of quarantine and into her permanent enclosure. So... I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys me introducing her to the enclosure, but first you're gonna get a look at her enclosure. I wanna give an in-depth tour, and if you guys have any questions about the enclosure, please don't hesitate to ask down below. So this is Cho Cho the Chubby Frog's enclosure, and she is not in here yet. I wanted to give you the rundown before introducing her. So we're gonna start over here with this Habba Hut. So Habba Huts are basically like little manufactured half logs, as you can see it's rounded, it's leaf was just kind of covering it, um, but it has like bark on top and then on the inside it's wood. Now what I did to make this safer, um, because I, sometimes it has a little bit of um, splintering on the underside and I didn't want that to be abrasive on my uh, amphibian skin, so I took a tiny little piece of like sanding belt and I just sanded it by hand and it really didn't take much effort at all because it's it's pretty well sanded to begin with but you know I just wanted to be extra safe so that's what I did. So this will act as a hide for her if she chooses to use it and I've also kind of covered it a bit to make it you know blend in more with the enclosure and then behind that we have a piece of driftwood. It is a flukers driftwood from Chewy and it has a really nice like concaved middle which is why I put polythos inside. Chubby frogs are known for basically digging up the roots of planted enclosures and polythos would be no exception but I figured I could try and plant it inside of something that had like um, more protection so that you know Chocho wouldn't be able to destroy it and this piece goes all the way down into here so it's like plenty of space for the roots to grow now so far it is alive but that doesn't mean that it will stay that way so this is just like an experiment and I don't know if it will actually work but we're gonna try it out what you're looking at as the flooring of this enclosure is a mixture of organic topsoil and terra firma by the bio dude as well as some sphagnum moss and some eco earth now the eco earth is more centered towards the bottom because i really just needed a lot of substrate to fill this space so it's mostly eco earth and sphagnum moss at the bottom and then the top two or three inches is going to be the terra firma mixed with organic topsoil and some eco earth as well as tons of sphagnum moss now you'll notice to the right there is a whole entire stream section we'll get to that in a minute but what i want to point out is that around the entirety of the stream section i have packed down sphagnum moss i'm hoping this will prevent chocho from flinging dirt in there if she does it's not a big deal it's not going to be harmful to the water it's not going to be harmful to the filter which again i'll get to in a minute it's not going to be harmful to her but you know you want to try and keep the water as clear as possible now let's talk about the stream area so the rocks are there to provide well some stability for this bamboo and the filter but also to make sure she doesn't drown chubby frogs are not swimmers by nature but they do like to go in the water and just you know lounge around and i have seen chocho in the water bowl in her quarantine enclosure so i know she uses it so what i did was added some very large rocks that she is not going to choke on and i made sure they were secure in place and they're not going to hurt her if they shift or anything like that and then i added some bamboo because my bamboo has been growing like crazy in my red eye crocodile skink enclosure and it's just water in his so i figured i'll give it a go with theirs i'll just put water in here and see how it goes 
and these are just bamboos um, that I ordered from Amazon and they're just regular old lucky bamboo or whatever. They're safe to use because fertilizers uh, were not used with them. They were just grown in um, like those little food cubes things, those little like weird see-through food cubes of the same type of food that the pet store uses to keep their plants alive when they're shipping them. So that's just what they were in. And you also may notice there's a little bit of sphagnum moss and stuff that got in here. That is my bad. I put it in there. It is totally my fault. Um, but in the very back, you'll notice a bit of movement in the corner, and that is a filter. Now, the filter is actually advertised for turtles, but I would never use it for turtles. It is too small for turtles. It's too small for a lot of things. It's a very compact filter. It starts right about here and ends right here and goes to the back. And it is a Zoomed turtle filter, and it just has, you know, the regular, um, biological filtration that occurs in a filter but it's very compact so I wouldn't use it for like an animal that actually requires heavy filtration. For this stream area it's perfect, it's nice and small and keeps the water going and you really don't want to have like stagnant water in any enclosure with water this big because you can't like take the bowl out or you can't take this out to clean it like you could a bowl. So you really want to have a filter or something that's going to move the water like um, like aeration for example. It's also good to have the water move because this may entice the frog to enjoy the water more. And when I was talking to Chocho's former owner, I told her about my idea for a setup and she said that she really thought that she would love the um, moving water area. So I'm happy to give it to her and I really hope that she will enjoy it. For the background of her enclosure, I took a piece of cork tile, basically it's just a cork background, and I cut it above the water section because I didn't want it in the water section. Um, and then I took some silicone and some eco earth and just kind of smattered it on there and let it dry, of course, and cure before putting it in the enclosure. Um, but the enclosure's been ready for a month anyway, so everything in here is pretty much good to go. Oh, I forgot to mention, the substrate is bioactive. So there are dwarf tropical white isopods and springtails in this substrate that have been flourishing in here for like a month. So I don't know why I completely forgot to mention that, but there you go. Anyways, back to the background. So the background's just, like I said, cork tile with eco earth that was placed on there with silicone, so it's on there for good. The reason I did this is just to make it match better. It looks better if you put some silicone and some eco earth on it. It just blends in with the enclosure better. I really like the look of it, so I've been doing it in all my enclosures that have cork tile or forest floor tile backgrounds. Let's go ahead and get Chocho. I have freshly washed hands that are moistened and I will not be holding her for more than a few seconds just to move her into her enclosure. Come here Chocho. I know I'm sorry to wake up in the middle of the day honey. So here's Chocho. She's just a beautiful girl. Of course it won't focus on her because she's against the light. Here I know I'm sorry. There you go. Go ahead. Loop. So there she is in all of her big booty glory. That's your enclosure, honey. Here, let's, I'm gonna get some of this out of the way so she knows this is like a little pre-dug burrow for her. Oh, I wanna add, there's no, um, what's it called, drainage layer in this enclosure because chubby frogs are crazy burrowers, at least mine is. And in her quarantine enclosure, I've noticed that she has literally burrowed all the way down to the bottom every single time I've like, seen her she's in a new burrow she doesn't like stay in one place unlike my tomato frog Gamakichi he literally stays in the same burrow the whole time he like is a very inactive dude but she is very active now the cool thing about my my tomato frog is that he likes to climb so I'm really happy to give him an enclosure that's gonna have some stuff for him to climb on because a lot of times I see chubby frogs pac-man frogs tomato frogs kept in just kind of really small enclosures with just some dirt and that's a bowl and that's pretty much it but if you give them some some things to actually climb on and engage with <laughs> are you just overwhelmed at all the sights and the sounds also side note i'm gonna have to put like a piece of paper in between my frogs because i bet you chocho is gonna see him and think he's food and i'd really rather not have her nose the glass 24 7. So I'm gonna have to put like a piece of paper in between them or something to block their visual. <laughs> but look, what frog is that? That looks like, that's Cora. So 
Cora is saying hi to her next door neighbor, Chocho. And back to Chocho, who is just sitting here. <laughs> Chocho, honey, you can go hide. You don't have to sit right out in the middle. So while she's sitting here, I'll talk a little bit about her and what I've learned since I got her just, uh, what, three weeks ago now? And she is just lovely. I mean, compared to, oh, there she goes. Compared to Gamakichi, she is more outgoing. She's been easier in terms of like getting her to eat. Um, they both ate no problem, but she is like more willing to hunt them than Gamakichi is. Gamakichi really just wants them to fall right underneath of his face and then he'll eat them. But she has kind of like come out of her shell a bit and she like kind of hunts them down a little bit. And she has been seen in her water bowl more often. She burrows a lot and she like can be found in different places inside of her enclosure. And Gamakichi, he has one main burrow. He just like, it's one little tiny hole that he just likes to sit in. And I'll find him out and about like climbing, which is great, I love that. But he absolutely just loves to sit inside that hole in his enclosure. And so I did his enclosure a little bit differently for that reason, but we'll get to it when we get to it. Cho Cho, honey, are you gonna go hide? She said, mom, I'm stressed, this is new, be nice. Oh, and it's also worth noting that I'm sure I will inevitably find, there she goes, ways that are better to work this enclosure. So this is not like a permanent, I mean, it's a permanent setup if it works for her, but there's probably going to be things that, you know, I've realized along the way that's better or worse, and I'll try out different things. So if you want to mirror your enclosure after this, like, that's great. I've done my research, but... I will leave any changes that I make in the description down below or in the comments down below because I don't want to like mislead people if I make any changes and someone like replicates this enclosure and then they come back to it later and they're like, oh, yours looks different now. Look, there she goes. That's where I was hoping she would go because I kind of like dug out a little den for her back there. Okay. So I'm going to let her get settled in. I'll take some more clips throughout this week of her enjoying this enclosure. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do Gamakichi. And of course, he'll be in a separate video. I will include it right up here. So go ahead and watch Gamakichi next. Oh, hi, cutie. She's precious. Oh my god, I love her. Oh, so cute. Hi, honey. Do you like your little burrow? I know, I feel like I gave you so much more to interact with. Her quarantine enclosure had a little piece of driftwood and a fake plastic plant and dirt, so it was pretty lame compared to, you know, this, which has a lot more visually and tactily occurring. Oops, I don't want that to be in your face. Here, I'll move it, I'm sorry. There you go. Okay, pretty girl. I'm gonna go get your brother settled in. Or sister. I mean, Gamakichi's probably a girl, but whatever. So it's the second night. And Cho Cho is right there. She was there, sleeping in that little den over there the first night, and then now she's over here. So, it is her third day in this enclosure. Hey, can you, can you move your face, please? <laughs> Don't mind my dirt mess. Can you move your face, please? I need to open the enclosure. Can you move your face, please? Uh. He said, good boy. Okay, so, I'm on top of Jackson now, so it's gonna be bumpy. Stop licking my face. So, she's right down in there. This is her third day. She's moved since last night. Last night, she was over here, as I indicated. So she's having a good time in this enclosure, I hope. Hi, Chocho. -cho. How you doing, girl? Okay, bye. I still haven't put the barrier between her and the frogs, and they're just like loving the fact that I'm over here because they think I'm gonna feed them. I'm not, that's not till later. It's kind of dark, so I turned the flash on, but I saw Chocho -cho right here. When I opened her doors, she went over there. But look, she's enjoying her stream area. Do you know how happy that makes me? Yes, Chocho, -cho, honey. I'm so glad you love it. Oh, sorry. I spooked you. Goodbye, goodbye. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not going to come get you. I just wanted you to enjoy. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Well, we're going to feed you tonight, so hopefully that'll make up for it. What it would have looked like without the flash. <laughs> so... 
Mm, yep, you couldn't have seen her. I don't want to turn the flash on, but like, she is ready. You cannot see her, but she is ready. <laughs> She literally ate a twofer, like she ate two at one time that were like kind of near each other and I didn't catch it on camera and I'm so disappointed in myself. Hi sweetheart! You so good. You so wholesome. I love your freckle butt. Okay, your video goes up tomorrow. Is there anything you want to say to the people? Is there anything you want to say to the people? She's just sitting there staring at me. I'm guessing that she wants more food. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what an angel. Oh, she leave. To where does she go? I want to know where you go, Chocho. Will you show me where you're planning to go, Chocho? I know not what she intends. Oh, she's looking at me again. <laughs> what did I do? What did I do, huh? What did I do to deserve you? Please tell me. She has the cutest face ever. Like, just looking at her gives me all the joy. I have to move on and feed the other froggos. Those ones. The loud ones. Bye, honey. I got to go. Say thank you, everyone, for watching. Time for the outro. Thank you guys so much for watching this video about Cho Cho and experiencing her first month here with me. It was so much fun, and it is going to be so much fun. And getting to meet her has been lovely, and I'm just really excited about the future of having Cho Cho as part of the family. I hope that you guys are just as excited as me. If you guys want to see more of Cho Cho, I recommend subscribing and hitting the notification bell because I will post videos featuring Cho Cho down the road. But if you want to see Cho Cho a bit more regularly, I definitely recommend hi egret she's about to lay eggs just a couple days away gotta love this time of year it's been the best <laughs> anyways if you guys want to see more of chocho on a more regular basis please follow me on instagram or twitter uh, i'm actually really not happy with instagram lately so i might not be posting there as much as i used to um, but you can definitely follow me on Twitter. I also have a Patreon where I talk about animal friends that I don't have yet or ones that I haven't shown on my Instagram yet um, the, that are relatively new to the family. And so if you're interested in meeting any of them, uh, by the way, there are two that you haven't seen that like the public hasn't seen. So if you're interested in meeting either of them, please go ahead and check out Patreon. With all that said, I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully it'll be for Gamakichi's video because that's the one I have intended next. So I hope to see you at that one. Bye.